presentation by saying, I've never had a conversation like this about these issues. It's most interesting. Never talked to my wife about it. Never talked to my, you know. So there really was just, it's, a, it's an obliviousness that, that we actually don't, you don't have in the United States because we, those of us that are secular, humanists, or atheists, or not, I mean, we have to deal with religion. It's in our schools. It's in our principal's office. It's in our city council. It's in our neighborhood. It's unavoidable. We have, it's in our presidencies. I mean, so we're engaged. They simply don't have that um, need because Religion really is so marginal and so benign, I would call it. It's just a nice whatever. You sing a few songs at, at Christmas time and whatever. And in fact, they liked religion. They, didn't, they, they were so secular that they, weren't, they didn't feel the need to just, they said, oh, it's nice. You know, what do you think of the Bible? Oh, it's a nice book of stories. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Or Islam. Oh, that's true, too. The free churches you do. And then the last thing I will say is the wonderful stories I got of Scandinavians about their time in the States. And this is when they truly, like, I guess, maybe your experience, where they just were shocked at the type of religiosity they experienced here. They just were overwhelmed. I mean, I heard story after story after anecdote after anecdote. Well, one woman, her husband got a job for two years in Seattle. She'd been here for a few weeks, and her co husband's colleague's wife said, well, let's go to the Natural History Museum with the kids. She said, I'd love to. They got to the Natural History Museum, stopped at the entrance. The mom got down on her knees with her three children and said, now, kids, remember, this is all fantasy. This is all fiction like Disneyland. None of this is true. We can enjoy the images and the dinosaurs, and it's fun to fantasize about, but it's not true. You know, and the Swedish woman was just stunned, deeply stunned. And uh, so, yes, there's something going on. And, and I'll just end here in my book. Um, I, one man I interviewed who was a, a, a husband of a friend of mine was actually one of the more overtly Christian Danes that I interviewed. I mean, he wasn't a strong Bible believer or Bible thumper, but he identified as a Christian. He said there had been a time as a young man where he grappled with these questions and actually decided that, yes, he did believe in God and did want to pursue those things, where his friends were just totally atheistic. Wonderfully enough, they, him and his family came to Santa Barbara for a year. She got a work in Santa Barbara. So I had interviewed him in Denmark about his religious worldview. Then I interviewed him after. He'd never been to the United States. He'd spent nine, ten months in America and had become an atheist. Oh. And so at the end of my book, I interviewed him again. It was, the, it was just a luck of, luck of the, you know, luck for me as a, as a researcher. And he said, he, he, if this is what Christianity is. I want nothing to do with it. I had no idea you Americans were this insane. And it, it was, <laughs> and he even says, he says, he says I don't think Danes and Swedes realize the degree that you really think. We think it's maybe just sort of symbolic language or cultural trappings or, he says, and I'm going to go back and tell them. We need to, we need to, the next time we join these people in a war, we need to, uh, uh, be very quite careful. So thank you for that. Okay, um, right here, sir, and then we'll come to the other side. Yes, three, we have the highest rates of intra-mobility of any uh, country in the world. We move around a lot within the United States. And the average family moves every five years. People need community in this country. We have a high degree of ethnic and racial diversity. Religion provides community in a, in a, in a world where we don't have such a strong sense of Danishness, let's say. But most important, most important, we have the highest... Uh, uh, gap between rich and poor. We have the highest rates of people living in poverty. We're the only industrialized nation that doesn't have universal health care coverage. In fact, most people live paycheck to paycheck uh, uh, with, with very bad health insurance. And I think we just have high, high rates of insecurity. And by insecurity, I mean access to health care, access to education, a, a warm place to live. And I think any society that has those things is going to be more religious than societies that have addressed those sort of basic issues. But that's just in a quick, quick nutshell. Sorry, let me give someone who hasn't asked a question a chance. I can't remember. Have you asked one yet? No. Okay, yes. Uh, you're, you're echoing against your cup. Oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> After being uh, in Scandinavia for 14 months and, and recognizing that it's a happier place and yeah. more just and reasonable and, and all that, were you tempted to stay? And if not, why? What <coughs> made you want to come back? Yeah. Um, okay, he asked, after living there for 14 months and seeing how great it is, was I tempted to stay? Um, you also said happier. I'm not so sure about that. Um, they, Denmark does do really well in these happiness indexes, but, um, you know, people are a lot more friendly in the United States, I got to say. Uh, in, 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 in interpersonal, you know, when you walk into a store in Denmark, you're not going to get a smile um, or even a market or whatever. Whereas here, it's, you know, you go to Vons, it's like, 
how can I help you? Have a nice day. You know, so um, I think there's, the, the, there's a friendliness that's a lot deeper in Scandinavia that's not a surface. But sometimes surface happiness is kind of nice, I think. OK, that said, absolutely, I would cut off my feet to move to Scandinavia tomorrow. Um, I love it there. And the only reason I don't, well, there's two reasons I don't move there. One, it's extremely hard to get citizenship in these countries. Uh, if, you know, and number two, all my family lives here. It would be really, really difficult to leave my father. He's getting old. Um, but boy, I, it's a fantasy of me and my wife. We're going back again for another year in, hopefully in about four months. So I have an affiliation with the university there. And I hope right now I can at least go every five years, three, four years, depending on grants and sabbaticals and how I can juggle that. But I would love to live there. I love it. I love rain. I love, um, I love calmness. <laughs> I love the woods, so yeah, to me, it's just paradise. But you know, food's expensive. Yeah, I, I lived in Oregon for 10 years. I couldn't have been happier. Western Oregon, oh, west of the Cascades. Thank you, yes. You know, and I got my clogs on even. I can't, I can't deny the, my love of Scandinavia. Yes, ma'am. OK, uh, I was getting back to your recovery. Uh, people in AA believe in God. It is heavy on God, but a lot of people have skirted that by saying, I believe that there is a uh, higher power and I don't believe it's me. Uh, so what, and the, I don't know if you've uh, interviewed any Native Americans, uh, but see, that's why I didn't raise my hand. Uh, a lot of people think that Native Americans are heathens, still to this day. Uh, so that bothers me, so my hand doesn't belong in any of those things, I guess. Uh, but what I was wondering, in your interviews in the United States, is the feeling that people are noticing the inroads the churches have made and are making in our government, and how I'm very uncomfortable with that? Are people bothered, or do they just say, well, let God handle it? Yeah. The question is, uh, do, do I get a sense that Americans are noticing the significant inroads religion has made in our government and are people upset by that. It's not my area of expertise, it's not my area of research, but I certainly think people are recognizing uh, the damage that can potentially come from the, the incremental uh, oozing of certain religions, or religion in general, but certain religions into our government. And I, I attribute much of the success, for example, of the New Atheist books because I think people were upset and angry about the Bush and, and what that symbolized. And I think they went out and bought those Denons and Dockets books to reaffirm their values and their commitments and their worldview. And I think that we saw that increased, uh, that sharp increase is now 16% of Americans claiming unaffiliated or none as, again, I think a reaction to that. So I think people actually are concerned about that in incremental uh, 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 um, movement of more and more religion into our government. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I've got time for one more question, and then I have to go to a wedding in Claremont. So someone who hasn't asked a question yet, um, you've been waiting, haven't you, sir? Yes. Sorry. Uh, of those that are religious, is there any kind of data that would suggest um, how, what percentage would be students of their religion or, or, or active practitioners versus people that are more aligned with it because of community or cultural aspects of it? And two, where does California fit in, uh, in the spectrum within the United States? Wow. OK, two questions. Um, but I need a clarification here. In your first question, were you asking about Scandinavians or just people in general, or Americans? OK, so the question was, of people in the United States who are religious, do we know in terms of what dimensions are they religious? Are they religious in a sort of cultural sense? Or are they religious in a, like, I believe in X, Y, and Z sense? Um, and what do we know about that? So I'll answer that question first. Yes, we have tr tons of data on this of, of how, uh, uh, and, and what I would argue is that far more people in the United States are culturally religious than, than, we, than, we, than most people recognize. That in fact, many people are involved in their religious community for reasons other than to get you know, saved from hell. Or you know, that they are there for the community, for the ethics, for the uh, uh, so community activism element, for the, for the uh, daycare for kids. I mean, there are far more, I think, people involved in religion uh, uh, at, uh, on all religions that aren't actually like to the T believers of this or that tenet who may not even know this or that tenet. And I think you'll find that 
uh, across the board. Um, I think there's differences. You'll, it's much more likely, you're much more likely to find that, for example, among Jews, Episcopalians, mainline Protestants in general, uh, Catholics even, but you're less likely to find it among, for example, Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons. I mean, there's very few cultural Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> I never met one. I mean, you either believe it or you, you know, um, more, you don't find a lot of cultural Mormons. It's like you're either, you know, you're either a Mormon in good standing or you are, you're, uh, you're out, man. You're out the door. You're out the door. You, you got, so, so it depends on which tradition. But I, I think we need to recognize, and I would say this too, that it's, a lot, it's so easy to demonize religion by just looking at that you know, one third that is aggressively fundamentalistic, aggressively political, uh, right wing, and, and that is not most religious Americans. I would say most religious Americans are much more uh, symbolically or culturally or communally religious, and the faith, while important, is probably idiosyncratic, personal, and so on and so forth. And they need to be, I think, our allies. And I'm, so I'm, you know, that's what I would think. Um, and the second part of your question was? Oh, where does California stand in the rankings? Often it's in the top 10. So I would say now it's in the top 15. Something happened in New England. It used to always be California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, Idaho, Hawaii. It was always a, left coast, a, a West Coast phenomenon. But New England, in the last 10 years, has undergone an increased secularity. I don't know why. So they've actually, places like Vermont and New Hampshire have edged out California. Whereas 15 years ago, California was still more secular. So California's up there. But again, depends on what county. Yeah. <laughs> you compare Marin to Orange County, and uh, it's interesting. Thank you so much. What a, what a joy. And this is for you, Stephanie. You can keep that. Oh, keep, keep it buzzing. Well, thank you very much. I had my eye on this. So thank you.